Hi, this is Dr. Wansu Im. I'm a senior community engagement consultant for HBCU Wellness Project. I'm going to talk about what is community mapping and then how you can participate for your project. Community mapping is defined as using mapping technology to identify, understand, analyze, resolve, disseminate community issue with the explicit intention of education and engagement and empowerment. Uh, it mainly you can achieve efficiency, effectiveness, and equity. Uh, also from the process, uh, you can engage and you can empower the community members while educating them too. So this is like one of the projects that I did like about uh, 14 years ago. It's like mapping deer population. As you can see, uh, green dot is the deer that is like alive and blue dot is deer that got killed. Uh, so students in high school students actually, you know, collect this data and then identify where the all the, you know, deers <coughs> got killed, concentrated, so you can identify the issues. And then you can do some kind of planning such as, you know, create a warning sign or hit like create some kind of wall or like this like slow down the traffic and then you can kind of plan and then you can implement and then you can evaluate again. So this is like the typical example of how group of community people can collect the data and they can share the information, they can identify issues or potential of the community and they make a plan and then do an action. This is a project that I did in uh, 2020 uh, during the COVID-19. This is Nashville. As you can see that the COVID, even everybody has the same, they might have same exposure, but they have a different risk uh, potential depending on, for example, job, where they live, and whether they are doing the social distancing. So if you look at it, this one shows the vulnerable occupation, such as those people who has a job, who, you know, they cannot do remote work, such as food preparation, you know, sales or transportation or production occupation. So this dark color is the concentration of people who has uh, those type of the job. And then this is, the, for example, you know, at the time, uh, COVID case, like the active recovered and disease case. So if you overlap, you can see, you know, they show kind of similar pattern, right? Of course, you, you have to do more like the detail, in-depth research, but by looking at the data, especially, you might be able to develop the hypothesis. So since the COVID-19, I've been doing a lot of data visualization with mapping uh, with the online. Uh, this is the you know COVID case dashboard by county level, time, and then space. And then I also look at the data from the Google, you know, your like from the data from your smartphone. Try to see whether community how people are doing the you know social distancing or like the stay home what like that there's more activity at the workplace or park and all those so try to look at how this is related with the covid like the you know outcome this map is interesting years of potential life loss before age 75 and as you can see the dark color is the uh, number of years of potential life loss which means people die much earlier than expected and then this is Mississippi River, right? And then this is the Appalachian, like the mountain area. Now, why this thing is happening? Why? Yeah, it's because of the, uh, you know that 80% of like the reason that people got sick is not necessarily because of like the, what kind of virus, but it's because their social and environmental and then all their behavior and then all other factors like what kind of water you drink, what kind of air and then whether you are close to the emergency room or whether you have access to the doctors and all those information. So we try to really look at 
all different kinds of the variable and then factors try to explain the outcome of the health and then health disparity. And I also create the interactive map uh, that shows the social service uh, on the web pages and on the also mobile pages too. So this is uh, one of the things that I want to try to explain. This is showing the COVID testing sites so people can find where they can, you know, get the COVID test. And also we have a vaccine map too, but not just the location of testing site or vaccine site, you can see whether right, minority population has access, what kind of access that they have. Right? So you can overlay with lots of different data and then you can create a map. And this one shows the like COVID vaccination result and then social vulnerability index. So you can create the lots of different type of the map and try to see a pattern and then relationship. Uh, this go back to 2005 uh, is the one of the projects that I did for the New York restroom. You know, I'm the guy that the, who created the New York restroom map because at that time, you know, when I went to the New York, I realized it like, you know, there is no information about the restroom that publicly available. So I created this uh, we the people who are interested in you know at the time 2005 we didn't have a cell phone so it was done by using the computer and the web but still a lot of people show the interest but the 2005 is the year when google create google i mean google like provide the google map services so i was lucky enough to use the google map services and combine with our data so it happened because Google will provide, you know, Google was provide like this kind of mapping system. Unless it would cost too much money or and the technology, I wouldn't able to do it. Right? So it, it's an app too. And then, you know, before I joined the Meheri, I was at Rutgers University in New Jersey. So we did project with using smartphone and collect the field data about the you know, campus safety. So one of the projects that you can do is the campus safety map too. So these are my students and then we look at the which area is dark and then, you know, like the dangerous and the safe and then with a photo, right? And then create that, like that kind of information dashboard. And then some of the students look at the, hey, why that place is dark? So they look at the light index, try to see whether how like the bright it is, right? And then they look at the, if, if there is a light, why it is dark and why it is bright. And then they can see that whether the street light is broken or walking, what, you know, so by collecting this kind of data, you can do much better assessment, right, about the safety during the nighttime. And also you can make more planning and then, you know, kind of prevention too. And this is a project that I did for the, with the Latino students in that, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, so this is me. So what we did is the, we did a project uh, with locate the safe route to school, assessing the how safe it is for the uh, sidewalk and then crosswalk conditions. So we mapped the, you know, like whether there is a fallen tree, like the whether like traffic signal is working, whether they have access to the like disabled people and all those. And so they, they have to look at all this data. So what happened was that they had to learn, right? How to survey this data. So they are more like into understanding about the like uh, safe route to school. But I got a phone call like from the one of the students. Hey, Dr. Im, remember that the data that I put it by using smartphone, you know, they actually, the government public work, they found that and they are fixing it now. Can you imagine how that the students might feel about this, right? I mean, he feel like, wow, I only spent one or two hours of my time, but it actually changed the community. So this is what I meant in the engagement and empowerment, right? You're using smartphone and you collect the, uh, your community data and then people get excited, but also there is a changes, like the, that change the community happening. 
And during the 2012, we have uh, like the uh, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, some of you may not know, but it was the hurricane that could happen one in every 300 years. So which means it was like, you know, a lot of people didn't really expect it. So this is near my house, right? And this is a house and these are police, like the people. So it was really bad. And then all, like what happened was the 70 to 80% of the road was blocked. And then, you know, electricity was gone and gas station was closed. And it was like the late October for people get really cold, right? So that's why that they, they create this kind of, you know, like they, they, they have like, issues of the finding where the gas station is and all those. So what I did with those students, with Latino students, we create this gas station mapping. Actually, the students and faculty at Meheri uh, participate in this project too. And also other students from the all over the country too. So we map the open and sold out and charging station. You know, you may wonder, hey, mapping gas station, how come it is related? Mapping gas station is one thing, but the information changes like, you know, every hours or every minute, right? Gas may be run out or there may have new gas and all those information. So number one, like the information that people are looking for in Google was actually gas at the time. So this become a big kit. So government, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, White House, New York City, and then everybody was using this site. So this is kind of like known community mapping project that I did. But I want to show that the, what we did for the like in Nashville area. This is we mapped the mosquito breeding site, you know, to prevent and control the spread of the Zika virus in North Nashville. We did project with middle school students. So middle school students using the smartphone and the map, they all the mosquito breeding site. These are the students, right? And then students response, my experience was really fun because we got to go around and we got to see all the things that we could stop to make sure the breeding of mosquito and Zika virus doesn't spread, right? It helped me believe what I could do in the future to prevent that. And students, I, like, how much did you know about Zika virus before today's event? They said they knew a little, but they didn't know. This is after we have didactic session, after they have class about the Zika virus and all those, and yet they still say they knew a little, they didn't know. But after the event, they said they learned a lot, they learn a little. So like apparently this kind of experience, like project based and going out and you know entering data really affects a lot about the learning, education, and also engaging and also being empowered. This is what we did with the Safe Route School with the uh, elementary school students and the high school or parents, right? So they mapped all the Safe Route School. Uh, we did also Tennessee homeless shelter. So look at the what kind of information, right? And then what kind of meal they serve, what kind of the, you know, like the service they provide. It may change every day too, right? So homeless people can have access. You may wonder, hey, how come homeless people will have access to a smartphone? You will be surprised. Actually, large percent of the homeless people have access to a smartphone and also access to the internet. And this is the smartphone, right? And then this can be generated by using Google My Map too. I will show Google My Map and the Mapler, which is a tool that I developed, and some other tool that you know you can do community mapping. And we also did the community mapping public health hackathon. So potential project, there is a lot of project you can participate, community resource map, social service map and the health resources map, food aid, vaccine site, testing site, why safety related map, environmental health assessment, why you can even map the trees, right? Or like the, there's a lot of other like the, you know, project that you, which is up to your imagination, right? Or like your willingness. And during the project, 
uh, by using Zoom, I will make sure that that you know you can use Google My Map, geocoding, Google Data Studio, Google Site, and then Google Site is how to creating website and Mapler community mapping platform. Uh, don't get scared. This is much easier than you you expected. Uh, what one hours of each like the you know topic uh, you should be able to learn. So not just the project doing project uh, during for next several months. These skills that you are learning will help you a lot when you go to grad school or when you find a job too. I mean, in addition that uh, you will do like you know exciting community engagement project by using technology. So here is my email. Uh, here is my contact. You can contact other members in our team. Uh, I hope to see you soon.